I've figured it out. I know what the key is to having success in the new Big Ten, and it starts with the big sexies. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden no Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. However it turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. What's up, y'all? You are listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Today, we are talking about the Minnesota Moving Company, the Big Sexies, the Hog Mollies, whatever you want to call them, the offensive line. I think they are the key to finding success in the new Big Ten. We're going to talk about what that offensive line looks like for the Gophers in 2024 and what it looks like long term. Are they set? For the future, do they have a good depth in that room? And finally, why it is actually the key for the Big Ten success in the new era of Big Ten. We're diving into all of that today. So if you want to talk Gophers each and every single day of the week, if you want to talk Gophers football, basketball, and what the upcoming things to keep in mind are, then definitely hit subscribe over on YouTube. Let others know about the show and be sure to leave a like while you're there. Now let's jump in right away and talk about what we have coming back from the O-line perspective when it comes to 2024. Now the Gophers have a lot of promise on the offensive line in 2024 because they are returning four and a half. Starters. That's right. Four and a half starters. We can call it uh, basically four starters for the most part. And the main key starter, the number one guy, the high uh, rated, I guess, prospect for the future NFL draft, probably in 2025, is Ariante Ursary. He started in all 13 games the last two seasons. Now, last year, he had a run blocking grade of 84 in PNFF, which was top five in the entire conference, I believe. And then he had a pass block of 71.1, which is still very solid, rock solid above average for that grade. Now, you look back to 2022, he was a 60.9 run block and a 64.7 pass block. So he improved dramatically in both of those areas. And he really stepped into his potential. Now, two years ago, I was telling y'all how Daniel Falele and uh, Coach Fleck were talking about Ariante Ursary was the future of this offensive line, that he was a future NFL guy, that he might be the most talented offensive lineman Coach Fleck has worked with and is starting to come to fruition. I will not be surprised one bit when he is called his name is called in the first 60 picks in the NFL draft next year definitely something that could realistically happen now he is a top five returning left tackle in college football according to PFF's grading systems and I believe he showed it I mean like I said an 84 run block grade he was one of the best run blocking bigs in the entire college football space and he will be a name uh, for premium draft capital next year for the NFL draft. Now, he does have two years of eligibility left, but I don't think he's going to use both of them. I think next year is probably the last run with our star left tackle in Ariante Ursary. Now, another stud on that offensive line who maybe was an unforeseen guy to come out last year when it came to stepping up into a starter spot and having the success he did is Tyler Cooper. Tyler Cooper is back with the Gophers. He started in 11 games last year, I believe. Uh, he might have had an injury for a game or so, but regardless, he started in a number of games last year. He had eight games at the left guard position, three games at the right guard position, and he had an 83 point three pass blocking grade, which was the highest pass blocking grade on the team. So overall, loved what I saw from him, was very surprised what I saw from him, and I'm not even going to lie to you. At one point in the early fall camp stages, I thought that Tyler Cooper was more of like a redshirt sophomore than he was actually the redshirt junior or a 
I believe he was entering his fourth season, fifth season last year. So he stepped in as an older veteran experienced, been with the room for a while, been with coach Callahan for a while and really stepped up to show that veteran presence and be one of the best pass blocking, actually the best pass blocking guy on this unit. And he comes back and can kind of lead the charge there. On top of that, he has the versatility. He's played both left and right guards. You can move him every which way and he will give you his best. And then some, I think he's going to be a valuable piece for the offensive line this year I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, probably either stay at that left guard position or if he shifted to the right guard I would not be shocked it depends on how Greg Johnson comes back now the other starter that is for sure a starter in next year is Quinn Carroll started 13 games in the past two seasons played at right tackle for the past two seasons and it's crazy because I know myself and your house uh Ryan Burns, we've all talked about how Quinn Carroll would probably be better suited at the guard position. He'd be more effective. He's a better run blocker than a pass blocker, and pretty drastically so. And I think he would improve his draft stock, but also this team's fronts as a guard. But we haven't seen him in that type of limelight. He practiced as a right guard for most of the fall camp heading into the season, and Martez Lewis is out the right tackle. Then all of a sudden, they flipped it. At right to start the season, Quinn Carroll was back at right tackle. Now, last year, he had a run block of 71 grade, and he had a pass block of a 47.6. So the pass block was really a struggle, especially in the final five games for Quinn Carroll. Now, in 2022, he had a run block of 79 for a grade, and he had a pass block of 55.5. So both those areas down a bit over the last year, and he has struggled in the pass blocking each of the past two years. Now, again, I think that comes from being more so out of his ideal position. I think you would love to have him kick into the right guard and really be a force from inside there and help in the run game as well. Maybe the Gophers are able to do that in this upcoming season. It could be a huge advantage. Maybe that means... Uh, a guy like Greg Johnson, a younger player who has the size, goes and kicks out to the tackle position instead and plays right tackle. It'll be something to keep an eye on. I think this Minnesota moving company, I think it could shift around a lot more than what we're used to. I think Ariante Ursary is cemented in there at left tackle, but I think you could see a lot of shifting, finagling, and finding the best combo heading into this year. Now, those three starters are back and will be the focus for this offensive line, but who will be next to them? You still have two guys coming back that have a vast amount of experience. You've got Redshirt Jr., Martez Lewis. He started in 11 games, I believe, in 2023. He had an average to slightly below average time in the run blocking, but had a roller coaster of a season when it came to pass blocking. He had six games with a grade of above 75, four of those being above an 80, which is phenomenal. But then he also had games with a grade of 5.4, 35.2, 24.2, and 48, which is very, very bad. So he had an inconsistent season all over the map, especially when it came to pass blocking, had some elite, had some very poor, and it's hard to say what his future on this offensive line is. I think he he adds a lot of depth and experience for this team, having played a lot of games last year, but I don't think it's a guarantee that he is just going to be a starter, depending on how some of the younger guys could push and make a case to be on the field. One of those younger guys, Greg Johnson, true freshman last year. He only started one game, but he played in 11 games, and his season had been much like Martez Lewis's, where the run blocking was fairly consistent and around average, but the pass blocking, he had five games above 70 with three around 80 grade, and then he also had games where he's graded 17.2, 1.4, and two zero grades in there. Now, I would expect that from a true freshman coming in, and I think it's still a little bit of a drastic grade with some of those lower grades because I think it was due to mainly having a lower number of snaps paired with a hurry or a QB hit and I think that it really dinged him on some of those grades which is a little extreme in my opinion especially when you're coming to a true freshman who is stepping in and playing valuable snaps so overall I am very uh high on Greg Johnson. I think he's going to be a bright spot for this offensive line, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him be a full-time starter in 2024. The question just becomes where? Is it in the interior? Is it in that guard type position? Or do they maybe kick him out to the right tackle, have Quinn Carroll move into the right guard, and all of a sudden you've got both your tackles and guards solidified, and you can look for a center to tie the whole thing together. Now that's the thing. 
We've mentioned time and time again here on the show that the center position needs to be filled. It's going to be critical. Now, last year's two deep guys that could be in the running for some competing when it comes to this spring and fall camp. Ashton Beers is a name to keep an eye on. Tony Nelson is a name to keep an eye on. And Cade McConnell is another name to keep an eye on to compete and try to make a case for starting spot this year, if not next year for sure. That is eight of your top 10 guys in that two deep that are ready for the Gophers this next season. Though three haven't ever really played snaps, they have been traveling and working with the team in a high capacity. So how are the Gophers going to look in the long term at the offensive line position? That's what we're going to discuss coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends at Nissan because this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. And so this week's team is the Auburn Tigers. They can only be described as the Nissan Pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch, and they've really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SET Tournament Championship, they are set to make a deeper run in the NCAA Tournament, which they will play their first game on Friday, which should be a good one. Um, I would be shocked if they lost in round one. So be like them, be like the Pathfinder and take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com today. Again, that's NissanUSA.com. And while we're at it, let's talk about FanDuel because the tournament is in full swing as of today. And you can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or the one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. So you place a $5 bet, and if you win that one, you will get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And that's $200 to use on point spreads. Uh, money lines, or you can even pick who's going to win the whole dang thing. So visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. And bet college hoops until they cut the nets down. All right, Gophers fans, let's talk about are the Gophers set for the long term when it comes to the offensive line? I want to talk about the guys that we have incoming from the upcoming recruiting class, but also who will be here for a good portion of the next three to four seasons as long as they stay and don't enter the transfer portal. There's a lot of quality names on this list. You're talking about four guys that have three years of eligibility left and Greg Johnson, who has started a game and played valuable snaps as a true freshman. Ashton Beers, who the staff absolutely love. They have high hopes for him. He could be a guy that definitely not only is versatile and can move to different positions all across the line, but has a lot of experience working with Coach Callahan for the past two seasons now. And you've got Tony Nelson, who also was the backup for Ariante Ursary the last two years now, at least for sure last season in 2023. And he is a guy that they have high hopes for as well. So that's three guys right there that were involved in that too deep involved with traveling with the team ready for the next man up if a starter went down and then you've got Cade McConnell who's also got three years of eligibility left he could be the guy who maybe puts his name in the forefront of the center competition heading into this spring sessions he's the only guy I say saw take snaps last fall camp at the center position aside from Carter Shaw and Nathan Bow, who are both gone. So Cade McConnell is definitely a name to keep an eye on at the center position. And those four guys, they all have three years of eligibility left. So even beyond 2024, you're looking at at least two more years of eligibility unless the NFL comes calling beforehand. But I don't know if that's what you're going to see from those type of guys. They might need all four years before they can take a shot at the league. So you're looking at at least two more years beyond 2024 for all three of those players. And then on top of that, you've got some guys with four years of eligibility still. You've got Nathan Roy, a highly recruited freshman in the 2024 class, a four-star guy from Wisconsin, was one of the best players in the state. At one point, was the best player in the state, so it depends on where you're looking for the recruiting rankings. But he 
can move. He has athleticism, and I have a lot of hopes for him. He's a true freshman this upcoming year, so he could redshirt on the season and keep four years of eligibility beyond 2024. That would probably be ideal. So that way maybe he could start in or step into a starting spot as a redshirt freshman and have four years to go with you at the offensive line position for Minnesota. That would be a welcomed sight for Gover fans. Another player who could do something similar and I think is the future at the center position is Brett Carroll. Again, a true freshman. He's not coming until the starter, uh, but he's a four-star guy. He's a state champion in wrestling, state champion in track, and he has the intelligence he has, the understanding he knows what he was looking for in his recruiting seg er, sessions and his recruiting periods, and he landed here in Minnesota after talking with Coach Callahan and knowing that he wants to move to that next level at the NFL. And I think this staff thinks he could be a John Michael Schmitz type of guy. Now maybe he doesn't play in year one. John Michael Schmitz didn't play in year one, but 2025 and beyond could be the year, the years where he really takes over and he claims that position and he makes it his own. I have a lot of high hopes for him. Both those players, maybe they both redshirt in 2024 and you get four years of eligibility beyond that. That could be huge for creating a staple on the offensive line and pairing them next to Greg Johnson in 2025 and beyond. But you've got other people in, in that offensive line room that bring great depth, that bring some upside, that bring question marks. You don't know what exactly you get from them, but you got Jerome Williams, a redshirt freshman coming into this year, four-star guy. Uh, Philip Daniels, a redshirt freshman coming into this year, three-star guy. Reese Tripp and Derek Mister, redshirt freshman, three-star guys. All of those players that I just discussed have four years of eligibility. So you're talking about what is that? Uh, three, six, nine, ten players with three to four years of eligibility, meaning beyond 2024, you'll have at least two to four years of eligibility between those 10 players that have been working in the system, learning, developing, growing, and ready to take the next steps. And when the Gophers have potentially four starters leaving after the 2024 season, you have players primed and ready to step in and take a big swing at their next opportunity. And if they don't succeed, if they don't find a way to play their best ball when the lights are bright. You've got a lot of depth behind them to find the guy that will. So I think overall, if you're looking at this list, the Gophers should feel like they're in good shape with youth and upside, but the real test of who are the guys long-term will start in 2025. Now, Greg Johnson has made a strong case that he will be a starter for the program long term. But aside from him, three of the four starters will be gone in 2025. You've got Quinn Carroll leaving for sure. You've got Tyler Cooper leaving for sure. Both of them will be out of eligibility. And like I said, I think Ariante Ersery is a lock to go to the NFL draft in 2025. So that means those three players all gone. Greg Johnson be back and maybe whoever starts at center this year could be back. But you're probably still going to have to fight to earn the job. Unless they they lay claim to the center position and they show like they own that spot moving forward and there's no question because they dominated in it, but they have to do that. You have to go and you have to prove it. So overall, there's a lot of potential, but a lot of question marks of how things could shake out beyond 2024. Now, all of that being said, you see, you're see, you seeing the younger guys who have been building in the program that will get their shot soon, and the question will be, can they capitalize on it? Now, last year, Tyler Cooper got his shot, and he was one of the best pass blockers on the entire team. On the flip side, Martez Lewis got his shot, and he was hit or miss in games and eventually had some games where he was replaced. So the things that I've heard or seen to keep an eye on heading into the spring. I think Nathan Roy, Brett Carroll will one day be starters on this team, probably for multiple years. But the question becomes when they could be ready. And in the meantime, who could step up in their in while you're waiting, while you're hoping that they build up into it. So overall, I wouldn't be surprised to see those two eventually be starters. Now, Nathan Roy is an early enrollee working with the program right now. Brett Carroll will be with Minnesota in the summer. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see the, both of those players make the two deep, travel with the team, be 
on hand in case of injury or anything like that. And if someone were to get injured, then that's where they could maybe be forced into early action, sink or swim type moments. So learning quick and having the motivation and the drive to keep on growing, learning, and keeping up with the speed of the Big Ten should be their number one focus in their true freshman seasons. Now, another route I could see Minnesota moving towards is Ashton Beers getting looks at center, wanting to get him on the field. Maybe if he if he has the capability of doing that. Now, maybe if that's not his his go-to role, if that's not using the best of his abilities, but you think he would be the best option for 2024, you get him going, you get him on the field, you get him some live reps. And then as we head into 2025, you can kick him back out to a different position, whether that's guard, whether that's tackle with all of the different departures coming through. So I think beyond 2024, when you look at 2025 and beyond, Tony Nelson could be a name to keep an eye at on for left tackle. He's been working behind Arian Terrasery. Greg Johnson at the left guard position. I think that was where his strengths lied last season. Uh, I think Brett Carroll or Cade McConnell, both of them can push for that center position. Ashton Beers maybe at the right guard and Nathan Roy at the right tackle. That could be your line in 2025, maybe. Be sure to clip this, save it for that season. But overall, there's a long way to go until then. I think overall center in 2024 could be the next area, the next uh the next piece that you can get some clarification on what the future looks like for Minnesota. And that could start in this season. Now, regardless, the future is bright at the offensive line and they also could be critical for the success in the new big 10 landscape. I'm going to tell you why I believe offensive line might make or break the gophers in the bigger big 10 coming up next. First, let's talk to you about our friends over at Fire TV because Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. They've got you covered. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV and provide to access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball's tournament, which is going on now, you're going to want to have fire tv and on top of that they've got you going with non-stop action the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free with the fire tv channels that includes us here at locked on and the most uh, most of our big pro leagues, including college conferences and so much more fire TV channels, lets you d dive into the game analysis highlights and more to keep up with the latest in the sports world. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, you name it, whatever floats your boat, they've got you covered. So check out fire TV channels on fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out fire TV channels, you should trust me on that. To learn more, you can go to www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right, Gophers fans, we're wrapping up today's show talking about could the offensive line be advantageous in the new Big Ten? I think it's critical. I think it is the key. I think it might be priority numero uno to keep the Gophers in that top 12, top 10, maybe even in the top eight in the Big Ten conference. If you want to get there, you have to have success on the offensive line position because when you look at the Big Ten, even prior to the new additions, but especially with the new additions, the defenses have been gnarly. They've been nasty. They've been gnashing, and they have been tearing teams apart. Defenses have been huge for the Big Ten. Michigan, Penn State, Nebraska, Ohio State, uh, all of them have had success on the defensive side of the ball. Even Minnesota in their best years had a top 25 defense. So you know the Big Ten is known for its defenses, and they're also known for their sack creation. In 2023, Penn State was number one in the country in sacks per game. UCLA was fifth in the nation. Purdue was 13th in the nation. Nebraska was 23rd. Maryland 24th and Michigan 25th. That's six schools in the top 10 for sacks per game in the 2023 season last year. So six in the top 25. On top of that, Oregon was 37th. Michigan State was 39th. I was 45th. And Northwestern and USC were tied for 47th. So that is 11 of the 18 teams that will be in the Big Ten Conference this year were top 50 in 
in sacks per game. If you can't slow these units down, if you can't find a way to control that defensive pressure and the defensive presence that they bring, it's going to be nearly impossible to compete in the new Big Ten. So how do you counter that? How do you slow these units and keep your team in the fight? It all starts with the big boys up front on the offensive line. If you can find a way to dominate the offensive trenches, that is where Minnesota can get into territories that they like to play in. And that's where we'll start to see a Minnesota team that can challenge and push and win games that people count them out of. So you're talking about Minnesota loves the ground and pound game. Minnesota loves the play action game. Minnesota loves the RPO. Minnesota loves taking shots on explosives built out of those different looks. In order to do that, you have to have an offensive line that dominates, that controls the line of scrimmage, and that gives your quarterback time to take those explosives or gives your running back time to hit the hole and create extra yardage. It all starts with the offensive line. And the lucky, luckily for the Gophers, they have four guys, five guys that have experience playing Big Ten football for next season. So if they can continue to gel, continue to grow, looking at the development we saw from Ariante Ursary in year one of his starting to year two of his starting, if he takes another group jump, if others on the team, Greg Johnson, Tyler Cooper, they take jumps, this offensive line could be dominant and that could be exactly what Minnesota needs to play their best football. Now looking at the flip side of it, teams that dominated on the offensive trenches in 2023, Oregon was first in the nation with fewest sex allowed. Washington was fifth in the nation with fewest sex allowed. Two of the best offenses in the entire country that gave their quarterbacks time. Georgia, who was number one in the polls nearly the entire year, seventh in the nation in fewest sacks allowed. Uh, Rutgers, in one of their best years in quite some time, they were tied for 11th in fewest allowed. So it just goes to show you that not only is the offensive line play critical, it could be the key to the Gophers' offensive upside and the key to their entire season coming from the big boys up front. So that's why today's whole show was dedicated to the big sexies, the, uh, the hog mollies, whatever you're going to call them. The offensive line is important and I don't think it gets talked about enough. So we wanted to highlight it here on today's show because the Minnesota moving company is going to need to live up to that nickname if they want to be players in this conference moving forward. And it all starts with 2024. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Lockdown Golden Gophers. Tomorrow, we're talking about round two of the NIT for the men's basketball team. We're taking on Indiana State, the Sycamores, and they are the number one team in the NIT, but the Gophers have a shot, and we're going to talk about it tomorrow. I'll see you then. Row the boat, Sky Umago Gophers, and as always, don't forget to hit subscribe.